Welcome to Steady Presence Farms, homeschool homestead, and some other stuff. This is what homeschooling looks like today. We just did it scared yesterday, and it felt a lot better to not be alone. Welcome back to Steady Presence Farms. I'm Ashley. Today we are making fire cider. Look at how beautiful this is. So this is a healing tonic that is helpful to start a fire in your belly for digestion. It helps with immune system stuff. It's just a beautiful all around thing to have during the winter season. So here you can see all of the ingredients that I have listed. We are following the Mountain Rose Herbs recipe, which we really like. And I'm gonna say we're following it, but it's kind of loose. We This recipe is very adaptable to whatever you have. So we already have turmeric in the jar, as you can see, ready to go. We didn't peel that. It was organic turmeric and we're using organic ginger root here. We didn't peel that either because that has a ton of beneficial organisms on it that'll help start the ferment. Uh, we are thinly slicing our one medium onion. This process is not for the faint of heart. I'm going to tell you that right now because these ingredients are meant to get all of your senses fired up and believe me when I say that's what was happening here. So while I was doing this, Dylan was uh, peeling the organic horseradish root. Oh my eyes! It hurt so bad, but it's for a good purpose. <laughs> so then we had um, hot peppers from the garden that we left the seeds in and we froze them. So we used those instead of jalapenos. We grew all of these beautiful garlics. We're so proud. We're gonna put more garlic in the ground tomorrow because it's gonna be a little warmer. Running a little late. Okay, so this lemon is like the crustiest, crusty crust lemon that has been sitting around for forever. And so it just started drying itself. So it's good on the inside. We used it. Uh, then I cut my finger. Ow! Then Dylan came in and he was smart. So we put the lemon in. This is not a direct science. This is not an exact science. So we just kind of follow our hearts on this one. So this is horseradish. You're supposed to grate this stuff and I don't know how you would ever accomplish that because it's so difficult to even just chop it. This is going to be sitting for a long time so I know that everything's going to be penetrated appropriately with the apple cider vinegar. So I just did my best job. My camera likes to float. And then we stamped it down with our fermenting stamper thing. I put some extra peppers in and rosemary, dried rosemary. And you fill it up all the way with apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. Oh, she's so pretty. Shake her up. And in a cool, dark place she goes. Shake her every day. And check on her in about four weeks. Good night. Today is also a lard rendering day. So how long has this been in, Dill? Uh, overnight. overnight. So we get our lard ground by our butcher and this is on high keep warm. What does that mean? Uh, just keep warm. Just keep warm. Yeah. Um, and that's what it's been on all night? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the rendering, the lard rendering process. Okay. I'm not an expert at this. I'm going to do my best is to separate the pure fat from any impurities and impurities would mean skin uh little pieces of meat yeah um lipid tissue like other parts of the animal so like here you can see the liquid 
and the other stuff. So then if we go over here, this is lard that's ready to go. So normally you would filter this through a cheesecloth or something. Um, Dylan's skipping that step because he's not planning on keeping these uh, as shelf stable. So if we were going to do it for shelf stability, then it's a separate process. And I think you filter it two or three times because the impurities would be what would go bad and the pure fat would not. Mm -hmm. 